This is part two on 1 Timothy 1, 12-16. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he reckoned me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. Father, as we try to understand, especially this sentence right here, I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief, grant us to understand how ignorance and unbelief and mercy relate to each other so that we don't excuse ourselves. Guide us now, I pray, into mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. I argued last time that Christ counted or reckoned Paul to be faithful. He didn't find him faithful. He found him as blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, and on the Damascus road, he sovereignly intruded himself into Paul's life and counted him, reckoned him to be faithful by appointing him. It's as though a convict, after serving, say, 25 years for armed robbery and assault, gets out, claims to be a changed man because of something that has happened to him, and you take him into your employ and you count him faithful and honest, and you appoint him to a service in which he handles very precious things. And five years later, he testifies to your mercy in his life and acknowledges that you didn't find him faithful. You didn't know whether he was faithful or not. You chose to count him faithful. And in Christ's case, appointing him makes him faithful. You can see that in in 1 Corinthians 7, 25. Now concerning the betrothed, Paul says, I have no command from the Lord, but I give my judgment as to one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy, by the Lord's mercy is faithful and trustworthy. So, Christ did not find Paul to be faithful. He found him a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent opponent, and he counted him faithful. He put him in the ministry, and he undertook to keep him, preserve him, sanctify him, and make him faithful. But here's a problem. I received mercy because. I acted ignorantly in unbelief. So it sounds like, on first reading, this mercy was somehow merited, or his guilt was somehow lessened by ignorance and unbelief. Is that what we are to understand? I mean, everything in the context except the wording there goes against that because notice this but I received mercy parallels this but I received mercy. And preceding this is I was a blasphemer, persecutor, insolent, and I received mercy in response to that. And this similarly, he's just said, I am the foremost of sinners, which is like saying blasphemer, persecutor, insolent. I'm the foremost of sinners, but I received mercy for this reason. And the reason he gives 
is so that as the foremost, not as one who, because of ignorance and unbelief, are not so guilty after all, but as the foremost, Christ might display his perfect patience as an example. In other words, the whole logic of Paul's giving himself as an example to guilty people who wonder if there's any hope for them to be saved, it wouldn't work in the logic for him to say, oh, by the way, I'm not as guilty as some of you are because I acted ignorantly. I'm not as guilty as some of you are because I acted in unbelief, and that's why I received mercy. You may not receive mercy because you may have not acted in ignorance and unbelief. That just don't, doesn't work. The, the, the logic of this entire passage, especially this last section here, is I want everyone everywhere to see the perfect patience of Jesus so that when they come to him desperate for a lifetime of sinning and wonder if they can be accepted, they will have encouragement to believe for eternal life. So it, my, my first reason for doubting that this, I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief, is somehow saying Paul deserved a little bit of mercy because it was ignorance and deserved a little bit of mercy because it was unbelief. His guilt was lessened. I don't think that's at all what is going on here. Let me give you a couple of other reasons and then tell you what I think it does mean or what is going on here. For example, here's Jesus in Matthew 13. Jesus did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Unbelief here did not make Jesus say, oh, it's not so bad. I'll do some more mighty works. Unbelief cut them off. Or same thing in Romans eleven nineteen. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. Jewish branches broken off from the covenant so that I, a, a Gentile Johnny come lately, might be grafted in. Well, that's true. They were broken off and you are grafted in, but they were broken off because of unbelief. Unbelief doesn't lessen guilt. Unbelief is guilt. That's why they were broken off and cut off from Christ. Or take the word ignorant, being ignorant. Here's Romans 2, 4 and 5. Do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing, there's that word, being ignorant, that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance, but because of your hard and impenitent, ignorant heart, you're storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath. In other words, not knowing here in no way lessens their storing up of wrath. Or here's Romans 10, 1 to 3. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. They're not saved. I want them to be saved. I'm pouring out my desire and my prayer to God that they may be saved because I bear them witness they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, being ignorant. That's the word, being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God, the righteousness of God, and seeking to establish their own. They do not submit, and therefore they are lost, and I'm praying for them to be saved. Ignorance does not lessen the guilt of the righteousness of God. So I come back here and say, there's no reason in Paul's thinking and in the context and the flow of the logic here to think that ignorance and unbelief made Paul more deserving of mercy. So how are we to understand it? I suggest it's like this. I received mercy because that's exactly what I desperately needed because of my guilty ignorance and my guilty unbelief manifest in being a blasphemer, persecutor, insolent. This because here is not a statement that the mercy is deserved, but that the mercy is needed, desperately needed. Next time, we're going to argue or work with 
verse 14, and grace flowed to Paul in faith and love. He didn't have faith. He needed faith, and faith came to him mercifully, graciously from Christ. We deal with that next time. But the main point here is to say that the logic of this passage, for the sake of all who are to believe for 2,000 years in Christ for eternal life, is that Paul was the foremost of sinners. Paul was the blasphemer, persecutor, and the point is he didn't deserve mercy. He needed mercy, and he got it, and so can you.